Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about knowledge, while we take a look at the story of someone who faced a really tall temptation. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. I have recently discovered some new stuff. Like what? Well, I made a quiz for you. It's going to be out of this world. Is that a clue? We're going to find out how much you know about stars. Wait, like stars or stars? I mean flaming ball of hydrogen and helium kind. Is there a prize? One chocolate bar for every right answer. Full size? You bet. To be delivered to the prize tube extraordinaire. I'm in. It's time to play the Out of This World Quiz Show. Here's your first question. What type of galaxy is the Milky Way? A, elliptical, B, spiral, C, lenticular, D, medical. Oh, oh, I know this one. It's um, A. No, I mean B, B, spiral. Final answer? Final answer. Let's see if you're right. Yes! Spiral is correct. You get one Milky Way bar. Yum. Uh-uh-uh. Hey, I won that. Maybe. You must wait for the final test. Um, okay. Question two. What is the nearest star to our solar system? A, Proxima Centauri, B, Sirius, C, Sonic the Hedgehog, or D, Beetlejuice? Nearest star, oof, um. A, Proxima Centauri? Final answer? No, D, Beetlejuice. Let's check that out. Oh, no, I'm sorry, but the correct answer was A. Oh, I knew it. You have one more chance. Question three. What is the Kuiper Belt? A, the remains of an exploding supernova? B, an icy collection of objects beyond Neptune's orbit? C, the hottest fashion item? Or D, the tail of an asteroid? The answer is, um, I think it's B. B, an icy collection of objects beyond Neptune's orbit. All right, let's see if it's correct. Yes! You win an extra dark chocolate bar. Can I open it now? You can open it now. Or you can trade your two candy bars for what's inside this box. What is inside that box? It will only be revealed once you choose. You have 20 seconds. Well, is it better than two chocolate bars? My lips are sealed. So it could be a ball of dry Ireland. Or it could be something really awesome. I'm really craving chocolate. You right have now. five seconds. Oh, what if there's a hundred dollar bill two in the box? Two seconds. Uh, okay, I'm keeping the chocolate. Congratulations, you have won two chocolate bars. Now I get to see what's in the box, right? It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through one group of people, the Israelites. Over hundreds of years, God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. And at last, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he was baptized in the Jordan River. God spoke from heaven, this is my son, and I love him. I'm very pleased with him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, Erica. Hey, everyone. So Jesus was about 30 years old at this time. After years of studying God's words and quietly working as a carpenter, now, Jesus was revealed to the watching crowds as God's son. It must have seemed like the perfect time for him to start teaching and doing miracles and gathering followers, but that isn't what happened. Instead, God's spirit led Jesus away from the crowds and towns and into the desert. For 40 long days, Jesus spent time with God, preparing for what God would have him do next. During this time, Jesus ate nothing. He focused on God as the one thing he needed above all else, but he wasn't alone. Not quite, because the devil showed up to distract him. You must be so 
hungry. Surely God wouldn't mind if you had just a little snack. Jesus was God's son, but he was also fully human too. And as the 40 days passed, he became desperately hungry. The devil refused to leave Jesus alone, needling and tempting him at every opportunity. At the end of the 40 days, he offered Jesus a large, smooth stone. If you really are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. It must have been so easy for Jesus to imagine that rock as a crusty, warm loaf. As God's son, he had the power to change the stone to bread in an instant. He could have torn off large, chewy pieces to satisfy his deep hunger right away, but Jesus knew every word that God had spoken, and he was ready with an answer. It is written, man must not live only on bread. If that's the way you want it. But the devil didn't give up. He led Jesus up to a high place where the whole world appeared to spread out beneath them. Every powerful kingdom, every palace, every throne and ruler on earth. The devil smiled, smooth and seemingly in control. I will give you all their authority and glory. It has been given to me and... I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus knew that one day he would rule all the nations of the world. He had come as God's rescuer, but to take this easy way the devil offered would destroy God's plan. Once again, Jesus spoke God's words. It is written, worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. The devil was seething. He couldn't tempt Jesus into taking the easy road, but he had one final shot to try. The devil led Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. They stood on the very highest point of the temple itself. The worshipers below seemed small as ants. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. The devil wanted to trap Jesus, to make him panic. Does God really love you? Prove it. But again, Jesus had God's own words at the ready. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. The devil was furious. He couldn't trip Jesus up no matter what he tried. So at last, he left until he could find a better chance. When the devil was gone, God had sent angels to take care of Jesus and provide everything he needed. Jesus had spent his whole life discovering God's words and spending time with God. And so when he had to make some tough choices, the words were right there. 40 whole days with no food? I can't even imagine that. Yeah, I sure do not make good choices when I'm hungry. And it's not just when you're hungry. Difficult choices can show up at any time. And remembering what's true can help you make the wise choice. So what's our part in this story? Well, before you remember what's true, you have to discover what's true. You can start by reading God's words in scripture and memorizing it too. And you can spend time talking with people who've been following God a while. Here are some super important truths to start with. God made you and loves you. You are so valuable that Jesus gave up his life so that you could have a relationship with God forever. God always hears you when you pray and is acting to provide what you need, even if it's not in the way you expect. And you can know the most important thing is to love God and love others. Exactly. The more those truths are rooted in your heart, the easier it is to face tough choices. Maybe you're at a friend's house and they're trying to get you to watch a show your parents specifically said you can't watch. You can remember that you are already deeply loved by God, so you don't have to do something wrong just to be liked. Or when your little sister is bugging you and you're about to snap, You can stop and remember, loving others is more important. Exactly. I think y'all got it. See you next time.
<laughs> Bye, Bye, Erica. Erica. So here's the thing. Remembering what's true can help you make the wise choice. Now do I get to see what's inside the box? Sure. <laughs> Ew, get that away from me! It could be covered in chocolate. No, no, no!